because now we'll see if the 2CV breaks the eggs. Go. The gripping. Go on. Where's the handbrake? It's the twisty lever in front of you. It's front-wheel drive, which makes it very good for driving across plough fields. It's got very, very long travel, very soft suspension and very narrow tyres. It really was designed as a, I mean, the polite expression is the people's car, but actually peasant's car is what they meant. Fate. This is absolutely true. That's remarkable. It works. Oh, there's a tiny bit of damage. This oof has sustained a wound, but actually not, not so bad that you couldn't still make an omelette with it, so none of the others are damaged. It's all true. You can cross a plough field in a 2CV with a basket of eggs on the seat. Do you want to try it in the Jag? <laughs> I'd love to try it in the Jag. Come on, Your then. Jag in this field. Let's not try it in the Jag. <laughs> We've now left the grand chateaus of Bordeaux behind to get down and dirty in France's most rugged wine region, Languedoc Roussillon. Spread like a crescent round the Mediterranean shore and down to the Pyrenees, its steep mountain vineyards yield intense Grenache and Syrah grapes for beefy reds and musket grapes for fruity whites. Here, I'll be showing James the winemaking process from start to finish. I'm going to take you right back to the basics of wine, the nuts and bolts of wine, and I'm going to show you how to make it. Well, we're going to make some wine. Are we, right? Excellent. And as the cock crew, it looked like a stitch-up. It's quarter past five, or quarter past six in local time, and Oz has brought me out into what looks like the middle of nowhere to pick some grapes, which is my idea of a holiday, really, getting up at, you know, oh Christ, 100 hours, and doing some horny-handed manual toil of a sort that they did in 1520. Marvellous. I'm really excited by this, to be out, actually. The beginning of this year's harvest is me and James out on these hills. It's fantastic. These are the steep granite slopes of the Côte de Roussillon, Catalan country. In 2001, South African Tom Lubber and Kiwi Sam Harrop bought a vineyard here and they started Matassa Wines. Tom and Sam's whole winemaking year revolves around this one event. If these grapes aren't harvested now, they'll overripen and the lads can kiss their 25 pounds per bottle goodbye. 25 quid for some phony colonial plonk? And they're obviously not um, Frenchmen. For a start, they're working. To capture the flavours we want to, uh, we have to, to get out pretty early and pick it uh, quickly. Obviously, Oz and James are contributing their part to that speed. Quite quick, isn't it? Yes. Now, I'm just wondering, do I draw the line at violence here, or...? <laughs> will there be wine at the end of this? There will be drinking. Right. In that case, I shall work. Ah, someone in the wine world understands me. Tom says you can just rip them off with your hands, right? Well, I tried it, failed. Two of mine did come off with my hands. For every one of these vines that they're picking, we'll probably get about half a bottle of wine on average. There's a very, very small amount, uh, which is why it's so expensive. Right, Guys, this is not going to cut the mustard. Um, Ass is down, head's down, picking. Oh, delicious. Scissors moving. And don't eat the profit. Probably the first time they've done an honest day's work in their lives, so 
This is obviously not something coming easily to them. Uh, I think there's a bead of sweat dripping off the tall one's brow. Oh, shut up. You are now officially van loading. You're not going to make wine out here. Unfortunately. Wasn't that fantastic out in the hills there? So savage, so noble. And these bunches of grapes fighting against the elements, but just dragging all that flavour deep out of those slaty soils. Uh, grape picking is not a romantic job. And if you're a student and you're thinking, I'll spend the summer picking grapes, don't. Because when you're 70 years old, you'll be bent at right angles. It's not worth it. Like the peasants we've become, we are paid with some homemade wine. I mean, this isn't fruit so much as stones and herbs. And I can taste the struggle of the, of the Antipodean. When was the last time you tasted a struggling Antipodean? Hey, hey, hey. Arrête Look. de parler et bois un peu. Ah. <laughs> bon. En Catalogne, on boit. Basically, well, in Catalonia, 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 stop, 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 stop talking and get drinking. <laughs> no, I, okay, I, I approve. Okay. Allez. I, I so approve of what's the Catalonian. What's the Catalan for selling? Sante. Got it. This rocky region produces good sun-baked reds for between five and ten pounds. Look out for the words Côte de Roussillon Village on the label. Village generally indicates a region's better wines. Hey, that's a wine fact. Tom and Sam like to keep things simple. Matassa's one of the few producers that still squash their grapes by foot. In you get. Can I stand on that handle yeah. thing? Yeah. In you go. It's cast iron, it's not gonna break. Gonna break. No, I thought it might tip up. Oh, okay. uh, isn't that nice? Oh. The squidgy feel of grapes between the Okay, tips. the feet are in the grapes. I can't believe that the best solution after all these years is a, a British bloke in his bare feet. This is the best way. The reason it is so important to do it this way is because you being in there is a very gentle process. And it's really, all it's doing is getting the juice and not the bitterness. And that's what we're all about, to make smooth, balanced wines. Cool. All right. Time to show the wine Neanderthal just how it's done. Right. You'll hear this again and again and again. Human contact, doing things with your own hands, makes better wine. I'm going down like a bowl of porridge, and you're just standing on the top there. Stop holding on to yourself. Well, what's that then? Well, this is just me uh, keeping myself direct. Can you cut all this please. philosophy out, please, and work? We're it's sick all... of it. And I know they're saying the foot is the perfect instrument for treading grapes. And I'm sure of the things that were available to people in the 12th century, it probably was the best thing. When we're not here, they'll be doing it with a hammer. The wine is extremely nice, though, I have to say. It's excellent. Get your laughing gear around that, my friend. Pure grape juice. Pretty nice, actually. Pretty sweet. Easy, mate. We don't have much. Mm. The lads only produce 5,000 bottles of white wine a year, and not much more of their red. That's a tiny amount, but it's worth it, because you get a real sense of these rugged hills in the flavour. So James has done his first harvest, and now he thinks he knows it all. The way wine is made is extremely simple. You pick some grapes, you squash them to get the juice out, then you store them in a barrel or something, and wait for fermentation to occur and produce alcohol. It's easy. Well, yes, that's the theory, but don't get too cocky, mate, because later on I'll be putting your winemaking skills to the test. I want James to see how some of my favourite sort of wine is made. We're headed into what the locals call La France Profonde. Deep, undiscovered, unspoilt France. Scattered around the village of Saint anne are isolated rural communities hardly seen by outsiders. Generations of farmers have been making wine here for centuries. Not for profit, just for themselves. Luckily, I know a man who can help us get our hands on some. 